I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, oh, take it away, doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time for another Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon netcast. And I'm glad you could join us once again. I tell you what, we are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network. Techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. And as you know, we are just so excited. I tell you, what, I tell you a little personal bit of excitement that I have going on right now. I have ordered, finally... An Android tablet. Yay! And it's supposed to come today as I record this. This is a Saturday. And I know you're thinking, yes, but UPS does deliver on a Saturday. Yes, but it's coming FedEx. Not FedEx overnight, but just regular old FedEx. So they deliver on Saturday, and according to their email thing, it's supposed to be delivered today. I'm just so excited. Anyway, now you might be saying, Dr. Bill, what tablet did you order? There are so many out there, and you were talking about all these different tablets. Well, <laughs> I got one very special. I got one from Woot. Woot. W-O-O-T, Woot. That is a place that sells one special something per day to geeks like me. And so, I went to Woot. <laughs> I love saying that. And they had a ViewSonic G tablet for $239. Dude. Now, this tablet originally sold for like $400. Now, I know what some of you are saying. Dr. Bill, a ViewSonic G tablet? I mean, yes, it has a dual processor Tegra you know, one gigahertz processor. Yes, it has 512 meg of uh, memory, and it can take an additional S minute micro SD card to take it up to 32 uh, gig of space. Yes, it's got all these great technical specs, but Dr. Bill, it's running 2.2 of Android Froyo. That's not good. You want one that runs Honeycomb? <laughs> Yes, but the ViewSonic G tablet, according to what I've read online, is the most hackable tablet of all. It is like the geek tablet because it has all the amazing hardware specs, the very high-end hardware specs, yet it is extremely hackable with lots of ROMs you can put on it. And so I'm looking forward to <laughs> hacking it and having a glorious tablet with many great features. Now, I'll use it with the regular operating system initially just to see what it's like, but then I'm going to hack it out of its mind. <laughs> yes, and I'll show you how I do it. So, hopefully, if all goes well, somewhere in this program, we will have the official unboxing of the ViewSonic G tablet. Dude. Now, there's a lot of things happening in the news, and we'll talk about some of those things, not the least of which is that some of you may have bought an HP tablet when they went on sale at Best Buy for 99 bucks. Those are also hackable. You can hack them and put a, a real operating system on instead of WebOS, which is terrible. Just saying. But you can put... You can hack it, and you can put a real operating system on it like Android, and life is good. So, some of you may have done that. Those are all out of stock now, sold out. So, oh well, if you didn't get one, sorry. But you can still get the G tablet a lot of different places for a very good price. And I'll be telling you more about that when we get there. Now... Let's talk about one of our wonderful sponsors. This sponsor is awesome. They are Carbonite. Now, I mentioned before that Carbonite, uh, I interviewed David Friend, one of the um, owner, developer, inventors of Carbonite, 
on an earlier netcast many years ago, and he was telling me about Carbonite. And I tell you what, his experience with his daughter losing her master's thesis and having to, no way to restore it, she had to start over. Oh, man, I feel for her. I've done master's thesis, <laughs> plural, and I've done doctoral dissertations, and they're no fun. You say, how can you do doctoral dissertations? Well, I have two doctorates. I'm an overachiever. I know. I'm sorry. I have one in theology and one in naturopathy. What are you going to do? Anyway, the point is, I know what it would be like to lose all that work. Not a lot of fun. So carbonite is what you need. And if you use this special bit.ly URL right here, you can sign up for a free trial, and it will also help the Dr. Bill Netcast. That's awesome. So do that. You will be glad you did. I guarantee. That's from a show I used to watch a long time ago about a Louisiana uh, chef dude. Matter of fact, he looked like my father-in-law. Looked almost exactly like my father-in-law. And he said, guarantee. Louisiana cooking, I think it was. Might still be on some places. I don't know. But anyway... I come up with these things. Let's go over here to the screen so that I can talk about Look, I was about to use a mouse that's not even connected. Ha <laughs> ha! That won't work. Just telling you, won't work. Let's use a mouse that is connected. <sighs> okay. First item! By the way, this is the drbill.cc blog. D-R-B-I-L-L dot C-C, -L -L as it says right there. Yes. For computer curmudgeon. You knew that. Anyway, first item, Steve Jobs' letter of resignation. The big news this week was that Steve Jobs resigned from his position at Apple. Now, he's still going to be hanging around a bit. But this is what he said. This is the official letter. To the Apple board of directors in the Apple community, I have always said that if it ever came a day where I could no longer meet my duties and expectations as Apple CEO, I would be the first to let you know. Unfortunately, that day has come. I hereby resign as CEO of Apple. I would like to serve if the board sees fit, which they did, as chairman of the board, director, and an Apple employee. In other words, he wants to stay with Apple. Can't blame him. It's his company. As far as my successor goes, I strongly recommend that we execute our succession plan and name Tim Cook as CEO of Apple. He's kind of been interim CEO before, and people know him, so that's what they did. I believe Apple's brightest and most innovative days are ahead of it. And I look forward to watching, contributing to its success in a new role. I've made some of the best friends in my life at Apple. And thank you all for the many years of being able to work alongside you. Steve. It's his official letter. It's kind of sad. But anyway. Wow. So, he finally stepped down. And the world didn't end. And the Apple world didn't end. So, that's good. <sighs> I have some mixed feelings. I think that the whole Steve thing at Apple was almost like a cult of personality. In fact, it was a cult of personality. He's very amazing and innovative, and he's done a lot of cool things, and will probably continue to do a lot of cool things as chairman of the board. But, uh, wow. It's just, it's kind of like the end of an era, you know what I'm saying? All right, next item. Will there be a new Star Trek TV show? Yay, I'm so excited. I hope there is. I really like Star Trek, as you know. And I want there to be a Star Trek TV show to watch. So, it says, New Star Trek TV series is being planned takes place after Voyager. Star Trek hasn't been on television since 2005. That's too long. After Enterprise, it just seemed like the whole thing needed a rest. But with J.J. Abrams taking his sweet time about getting another movie off the ground, perhaps a fresh TV show is the right way to go. There have been rumblings that the new Trek TV series might be in the works for a while now. For instance, at one point, a new Trek animated series was being worked on. Yeah, okay. Uh, it might be fun, but still. There's a new addition to the list of Star, Star Trek TV series possibilities. A live action project codenamed SETI being developed by David Foster. 
He spoke about his plans to TrekWeb. Apparently, this is a project he's been working on since 2006. And while Foster is tight-lipped about the nature of the project, he does have this to say. The series concept is fully developed, and subject to change, of course, with a solid five to seven year series plan, pilot script, and a conceptualized finale that intends to define Star Trek for generations. Pun possibly intended. Extensive character bios, costume and ship set designs, and more. This is a drastic departure from the typical eight to ten page treatment in the previously pitched Star Trek series ideas that does not even include a pilot script. So, he's pretty serious about it. Coolness! I hope it works out! So, let's take a moment now for another sponsor. This sponsor is Citrix Systems. You've heard me talk about Citrix Systems, and they are awesome. I'm a Citrix System Administrator at High Point Regional Health System, as well as VMware. But Citrix Systems has a product called Go To. I have such a hard time with this. Go To Ex PC Express. It's on the screen. <laughs> Sorry. I just have a hard time with names. Fred, Velma, you know, those kinds of names too. Anyway, so go to Assist Express. I got it. Got it. Go to Assist Express. Will help you help your friends because I know most of you that listen and watch this show are geeks. And so you need to help your friends, and this is a great way to do it. Go to Assist Express. So there you go. You need to get this product. And this URL right here, this special bit.ly URL, will give you the information that you need to check it out with a special offer. And it will also help the Dr. Bill show if you click on it. So do so. Okay? Okay. All right, next item. This item is very interesting. Bogus download copy times will be removed in Windows 8. Now, for all these years, we put up with Windows saying, five minutes left to download, 10 minutes left to download, one hour and 40 minutes left to download, five minutes left to download. It just keeps going up and down. You don't know what's going on, and neither does Windows. <laughs> so what are they doing? Microsoft's been throwing out crumbs on forthcoming features for Windows 8, but has dodged serving up the main course. Windows 8 will clean up the system for downloading files to your PC and changing file names. Microsoft is setting its newly launched Building Windows 8 blog. The successor to Windows 7 will combine the file download dialog boxes into a single box. You'll be able to stop and pause downloads. And rather than trying to estimate how long a download file has left, the new operating system will instead feature a graph that shows the data transfer speed, the transfer rate trend, and how much data is left to transfer. That's pretty cool. That can certainly be more accurate than estimating the time and being wrong. Totally wrong. <laughs> so, I kind of like that. I think that'll be cool. Be interesting to see how it's implemented, but hey. Next item, Google Ads Ignore option to Google+. Plus. <laughs> Are people bugging you? Are they sending you stuff you don't really care about? You can click ignore and ignore them. And then you can unclick ignore in the, like, you know, control panel thingy and unignore them. It basically, any, you can include, undo any ignores in the more actions only uh, circles page to be precise, which I rarely am. Oh well. Next item. Could the upcoming Amazon tablet be the iPad killer? Eh, maybe. It will be cheaper, and cheaper is always a good thing. Uh, the long-rumored iPad killer that could be Amazon's upcoming tablet is expected to launch sometime in September or October, which is pretty close. But with the recent $99 fire sale of the discontinued HP touchpad that we talked about earlier, uh, doing it so amazingly well, they basically sold out. There are new reports that Amazon may introduce the tablets at a similar low price point to excite the masses. The masses. Which would be cool. 
And hopefully it'll be hackable too. I like the whole hacking thing. So, just saying. Matter of fact, I hadn't planned on announcing this, but I'm considering doing another blog and netcast. Oh man, I just don't know if I can do it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not I'm not doing justice to Vertzine, my other netcast, as it is. And yet here I am thinking about another one. I've already developed a website for it. It's going to be called Hand Held Hack. H A N D H E L D H A C K. Handheldhack.com. If you want to go there and see the pre-site goodness, I'm hoping that I'll have lots of stuff there about all the fun I'm going to have with my tablet that will come in today. So, supposed to. So anyway, handheldhack.com. And if all goes well, we'll have a handheld hack netcast to go with it. <laughs> fun to say, handheld hack. Anyway, just an idea that I've got floating around in my brain. Yes, many things float around there. Just saying. Okay. Some people do apparently care about Firefox 6 after all. You know, last time I said nobody cared. Well, apparently some people do. There's an organization called Chiquita Insights. Probably not how you pronounce it. Chick-ticka, chick I don't know. It's a research arm of the online advertising network called Chitika. Never heard of them, but anyway. They use their data to monitor and report on internet trends, search engines, click-through rates, the mobile wars, mobile wars, and so on. So, when they show Firefox 6 usage is up, I guess some folks were suitably impressed with Firefox 6. Oh, well. It says Firefox 6 takes off is up over 8% of traffic. August 16th saw the release of the newest version of Firefox, Firefox 6, and already the browser is taking off with rave reviews. The second version, released under Mozilla's new rapid release process, Firefox 6 has seen a huge bump in our network since release day. To quantify the spike of traffic, Chitika took a look at all USA and Canadian traffic from August 16th to August 22nd, and they took a look at the hourly growth of Firefox 6 as a function of overall traffic and just Firefox traffic. Clearly, Firefox 6 is growing, already consisting of just over 8% of our total traffic by the end of the day on August 22nd. Pretty impressive, actually. So, there you go. Whoa! That drum roll <laughs> tells us that it's time for the Geek Software of the Week. Geek Software of the Week this week is... Unlocker. It's a file system unlocker called Unlocker. So inventive. Anyway, have you ever tried to delete a file or directory only to get the message? The message. The message file locked by system. Then you reboot. You hope it unlocks the file, but sometimes you reboot and it's still locked. Well, this free utility will unlock it, which is cool. So go to the URL that I provide here, which I'll put up here on the screen. But anyway, it is emptyloop.com unlocker. Yes. So you can get that, and when you install it, just remember, and this is true of everything, everything, everything you install, watch very carefully if they say something about, do you want to add a toolbar, say no. No. It's annoying. So just don't install that, and you'll be good. Okay. Now, if, if my tablet came, I'm going to put the unboxing right here. Okay. You guys bear with me here because I've never done an official unboxing. I'm going to use my trick of an ink pen as a knife. Comes highly recommended because the tip of the pen won't go very deep and that way you don't get a mess. Ta-da! Look, a green bag. 
How cool is that? We'll throw that away. And ah, pry it out. This box is now empty, and this box has the pretty pictures on it. See if I can keep it from shining at you there. And it looks pretty much good in terms of wear and tear. That's always a good sign. Now we will take the plastic off of that. Sorry for hitting the camera and making it wiggle there. Didn't mean to. Okay. Now, here comes the confusing part, and that's figuring out how to open the box. It has a little dealy here at the bottom that you open, and then open it this way, flip it back. Ooh, hey, this is cool. Check this out. It has a pad on the top of the box to protect the contents. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of nice. Somebody was thinking. And then you have your basic paperwork. Yes, including a cleaning thingy and some information, which I will read offline. Don't want to bore you. Now, here we have the little, oh look, a cool plastic bag thingy. Very nice. These folks did a good job of packing. And then, this is the hard part, of course. I'm blocking the light. Sorry. There we go. Whoops, doing the shiny thing again. Ooh, ah. Ooh. There you go. Official G tablet. I'm already getting fingerprints all over the front of it. Tons of fingerprints. Okay, let's see what we got in here. We have stuff. I'm going to put this back there while I look at the stuff. This is a plug-in of some sort. This is hard to get apart. The other trick is not getting this apart in such a way that it tears anything up. And here we have... Ooh! A plugger inner and a charger rater. Plugger inner here in this bag, charger rater end on this bag. I of course made that up. The name for it. This appears to be a plastic adapter doohickey to adapt the official charger rater. Now, I'm not entirely sure why you would have to have an adapter doohickey. I guess different countries you would get different adapters possibly, but once you pop it in there, it becomes a standard plug. Kind of an interesting idea. So, I know from reading ahead that the next step is to charge it up. And I'm not supposed to be able to fool with it for four hours until I have charged it for four hours. Which for me is going to be very difficult. But I'm going to be good. Okay. There is the appropriate place to plug in the power. So I'm going to put that back there now that I've got it plugged in. And I'll go over here and see if I can locate power socket widget. I'm hitting the thing again. Sorry about that. Okay, now notice that I have a little bitty red light here. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe if I turn it toward the camera that would help. A little bitty red light which says it's charging. So, now I've got to be patient and let it charge. So what I'll do is I'll read the paperwork in the meantime. Dude. So, you either just saw the unboxing, yay, or you didn't. 
Aww. Grump. Because that would mean it didn't come today. <laughs> Hope it does. Maybe it did. I won't know until after I finish the netcast and go check and see if it was delivered. Yes. So, guess I'll go check. I'm so excited. <laughs> and remember until next time that the doctor is out of here. Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon is a production of DrBillBailey.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining.